Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Books and Looks and today I'm looking at What Artists Wear by Charlie Porter, the journalist. This is a beautiful, beautiful book. It's an extremely thought-provoking book talking about the language and power of clothing, something that's obviously quite close to my heart as somebody that's worked in fashion, art and culture for the past 25 years. Porter looks at the loaded nature of clothing and the political and personal and practical nature of what we wear. And that's what's so interesting, isn't it? Notice that this is clothing and not fashion. You know, for me, fashion is, um, is something that's seasonal, something that's ever-changing, whereas... Um, you know, style and style is about the way that we express ourselves. That's what really interests me, the way that we express ourselves through our clothes and through using fashion, using the thing that sums up the zeitgeist. That's what fashion is. This book's about, about clothes, what artists wear. He talks about gender narratives and the power dynamics implied through clothes. So the book is separated into different chapters regarding different types of clothing, be that denim or tailoring. And then there's the idea of what artists wear to actually work and then what artists wear outside of work. Um, that makes it sound a little dull. It's far, far, far from dull. It's really looking at clothes from a semiotic perspective. Clothes as signs and symbols and you know, how artists express themselves through the clothes that they're wearing, even if that isn't on a conscious level. So he cites this portrait of Francis Bacon, and Francis Bacon was often portrayed in photographs, often by John Deacon, in a suit, you know, in, in beautiful tailoring. And yet, when you see the chaos of Francis Bacon's studio, there's paint and paintbrushes absolutely everywhere. And there, in the photograph of his studio, is, uh, is some of Francis Bacon's clothes that have got paint all over them and his overalls that he painted in. So there's this distinct difference made between the way that Francis Bacon wanted to represent himself in images, in photographs, and in the, the clothing that was a lot more functional. And maybe we all have that to an extent. You know, we have clothing for different occasions. And I do think that when we're re-exploring or rediscovering our style identity in our 40s and 50s and, and midlife, it's important to really think about the life that we actually lead, to think about a less sexy aspect of, of style, which is the, the practicalities, right? There's no point in having a wardrobe full of clothes for a fantasy life or a fantasy body that we don't actually have. Sure, we can include bits and pieces, accessories, little bits of clothing that help us to dream. I love the fantasy and imaginative nature of of clothes and of fashion that help to transport us into other realms, just like literature does. But on the other hand, there's the practicality of what do I actually spend most of my time doing? And of course, if you retire, that might shift as well. The thing that I see in some of my clients is that they keep all of their old clothes or far too many old clothes for cleaning or for gardening. And, and that's fine if you're gardening all day, every day. But sometimes I see far too many old clothes, drawers full of old clothes. Oh, for gardening. Oh, for cleaning. But, how, you know, how much gardening, how much cleaning do we actually do? And how many old clothes do we actually need for these activities? So don't hesitate to prune and declutter your old clothes drawer. And don't forget, I've got my declutter series of videos to help you on your way with that. Charlie Porter also explores, you know, artists like Cindy Sherman and her use of clothing as costume to enable her to take on different roles um, and portray different types of men, women, clowns in her work. So the idea of clothing as costume, this is interesting for us, I think, in our modern lives as well. The idea that at midlife, maybe we can explore different sides to ourselves and the different roles that we play. And sometimes I think it can be quite fun to challenge ourselves to go into different stores or different brands or you know, just wear things that sometimes we wouldn't naturally be drawn towards because, you know, you might enjoy it. So there is this aspect of initially putting something on and maybe it feeling, oh, I don't feel like myself, or it feels a bit costumey. But you have to ask yourself, is it just because you're not used to it or is it because you've been neglecting a side of yourself that now it's time to express? And of course, you don't have to go full on in a look, but I think it can be fun, you know. Maybe, for example, I'd... I never wore jeans until I was 30 or a leather jacket because I felt that I felt that those things were too casual for my style. You know, my style is quite classic and elegant with a funny twist. And yet I reached a certain point where I thought, gosh, am I just neglecting a different side to myself, a side that does enjoy more casual activities? You know, I love surfing. I love these things. Um, hiking, for instance, as well, where it's not necessarily about dressing up. There is a practicality to it. Um, so one day I went into a jeans department and I just tried on loads of different shaped jeans and 
sometimes saw my figure in ways that I'd never seen it before, because that's what happens when you try on different silhouettes, right? The book also draws on ideas of private and public clothing. You know, what do we wear behind closed doors or what do the artists wear in different performances or, you know, in and out of the studio? This idea that that we maybe we can express ourselves as very different people or very different personas inside the house and outside of the house. And maybe it can be interesting for all of us to explore that tension and that dynamic that can sometimes happen. How do we dress for ourselves versus how can we dress for other people or how do we dress for other people? And how can we find a greater reconciliation between the way that we express ourselves for ourselves and the way that we express ourselves, let's say in a work environment where maybe there's a strict uniform, for example, or dress codes, fascinating. I'm often drawn to these contradictions of modern life that the book touches upon. The fact that in modern life, you know, we've got this individualistic society, we've got that power to express ourselves um, as individuals and to represent ourselves however we want to. And yet still for many of us, there's a, we have a difficulty in representing ourselves through our clothing, um, partly because of the expectations of others, partly because of the changes in our body, partly because there are certain um, boundaries that we want to set for others as well. So it's, it's a fascinating tension. The book looks at Sarah Lucas, one of my favourite artists, one of the those 90s enfants terribles of the fashion industry. And Sarah Lucas moved to the countryside and she talks about that shift in clothing when she moved to the countryside and the and how she still, you know, loves some of the, the brand labels that she used to love. Um, but there's a new, she's found a new love of, of pyjamas and like the great woolly cashmere jumpers and that sort of genderless fashion that can come with wearing, you know, jumpers and pyjamas, right? You know, these are unisex pyjamas from Tekla, for instance. This is, um, this is the Hermes skin tint that I absolutely love. This, this is great for when you've just come back off holiday. It's, it's just a really light, glowy touch to your skin. Lucas says in the book, it's always such a huge relief to get your old garb on. And there is a, there is a wonderful pleasure, isn't there, in putting on old, old favourites, comfortable jumpers. I love it when I go to my mum's. And uh, I've got some of my jumpers from childhood there, you know, that she knitted for me. She's a great knitter. And I love putting them on. And there's this idea of memory held in clothing, isn't there? Louise Bourgeois is also um, examined in this book, who, of course, uses clothing and props and talks about the emotional significance and sometimes the emotional weight of clothing and those kind of issues of holding on and letting go and I explore some of those issues again in my declutter videos uh, because I think decluttering isn't just about you know getting rid of clothes it's about getting rid of the emotion and the sentiment and the memories imbued with those clothes and a lot of us find that really difficult myself myself included I've just put on a little bit of that uh, that Hermes blush Oh, that's just so peachy and corally and just makes me feel a little bit more awake in the mornings. Um, and actually, I love the Louise Bourgeois chapter of the book, and maybe that's because I love Louise Bourgeois. But she also then talks about how Bourgeois redefined her relationship with clothes later in her life when she met the designer Helmut Lang. Uh, and then she started collaborating with Helmut Lang. This is the Hermes lipstick. I never would have chosen this colour because I'm always drawn to orangey colours. And you know, do you know that feeling where sometimes we go and buy the same thing over and over and over and over? You know, it could be the same shade of red lipstick. It could be the same object. Some of us are hooked on buying jeans. Some of us are addicted to buying t-shirts. And then we look, open our wardrobe and we say we've got nothing to wear, but then we've got a hundred of the same thing. So sometimes that's why it's great to come out with me or a stylist that you know, or a friend um, that helps you to see that you're buying patterns and helps to identify you know areas that you get a bit style stuck in um, and helps to liberate you and push you gently and kindly to try out new things so it's we've got to sometimes let ourselves evolve right and let our style evolve just like Louise Bourgeois did with her relationship to Helmut Lang which changed the way that she saw clothes et voila thank you so much for watching if you've got any books to recommend don't hesitate to pop them in the comments below i do recommend this book i absolutely enjoyed it so much thank you so much charlie porter it's a great read merci au revoir à la prochaine bye bye